Hope you're okay. It's good to be with you. Happy New Year to everybody. Um, we're going to do some videos. We're going to do a few Bible teaching videos of sermons and stuff, which uh, we'll be doing in the next few videos. And um, I just want to, in this video, I just want to ask a question to Muslims. This is a Quran. I'm going to ask a question and I'm going to leave the comment section open. So if people want to make comments and, and give me some information or help me to understand uh, because maybe I've got this wrong so I'm willing to be corrected by Muslims out there. So if there's any Muslims that can correct me, any Muslim scholars, any any Imams, any 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 Muslim really could, could put me right, I'm willing to listen. Okay? And if you answer this question correct, I'll become a Muslim. So if, if this question is dealt with in a satisfactory way, then I'll become a Muslim. But I, I do think this question will destroy Islam. I think this question is, is the end of Islam, will destroy Islam, will finish off Islam. And I'm going to ask the question. So you've got to be ready, Muslims. I, when I ask this question, I'm not being um, disrespectful. I'm, I want to know what the truth is. If the truth is Islam, I'm coming to mosque. I believe the truth is Christianity. I believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe that he died and rose again. I believe that. That's what I believe. But I want to know the truth, and I believe that, that I found the truth, that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So, the question that I, I have to ask is this. I've been doing evangelism for many, many, many years. And um, the last five years I've been doing it on the streets a lot more than I've been doing. And Muslims will always tell me the Bible's changed and they will show the NIV and they'll show the King James and the sense verses missing out of there and whatever. And we have what is called the science of textual criticism. So I can point you to ancient manuscripts that the King James was based on. And I can show you ancient manuscripts that the NIV, the New International Version of the Bible, the, uh, I can show you the ancient manuscripts, the Sinaiticus and the Vaticanus, for example. So we, we, we know the names of the manuscripts behind any Bible translation. So when the Muslim says the Bible's changed, we just have to give them a little bit of an education in the science of textual criticism. Now here's the question. Give me, for your personal Quran that you have, and if you can't do this, Islam's not the truth. Islam's a lie, and you need to turn away and you need to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ who died on the cross for you. If you cannot answer this question. What is the ancient manuscript behind your own personal Quran? That's the question. Okay? What is the ancient manuscript behind your personal Quran? Quran. So the Quran that you use at home, what is the ancient manuscript that was used or manuscripts that were used for the translation or the publication of the Quran that you use? Now, most of the Qurans that we have today are based on uh, an Egyptian uh, publication in uh, the 20s and uh, I think 20 or 30s they got together and they made a publication of the Quran and that is the main uh, publication and I'll give you the details in another video later on in the week uh, and that's the basis of um, most of the Qurans that we have no ancient manuscript was used for that publication so basically all the Qurans that you're using now are not based on any ancient manuscript. 
Now, before you jump to the Khan, you're going to say, oh, well, it's based on Uthman. It goes back to Uthman, and uh, we have oral tradition. That will not cut it, that will not do, that will not deal with the issue. I'm asking this question. What is or are the ancient manuscripts behind your own personal Quran? Now, if the answer is you have none, then Islam's not the truth. Because how can you know that the Quran has been preserved if you've never had scholars get together and collate all the ancient manuscripts of the Quran and then print a, a Quranic uh, edition with uh, the notes of the ancient manuscripts that you used. So if an atheist says that the Quran has changed, all we have to do is go to the manuscripts of the Quran that have been cited in the publication of that Quran. But if the publication of that Quran, the ancient manuscripts are not cited, how can we find out whether the Quran has changed or not? And that shows that if there is no Quran, if the Quran that you're using does not have uh, the information about the ancient manuscripts that you use, then all I can say, Muslims, the game's over for Islam. It's finished. It's gone. That's it. You've been believing a cult. You've been believing a lie. You've been believing an absolute lie. It's an absolute disgrace for a Muslim to say the Bible's changed and show verses uh, that that are not in the NIV and, and are in the King in the King James or vice versa. But we have ancient manuscripts and we can take you to those manuscripts and we can show you and explain to you the textual criticism behind the King James or behind the NIV. We can show you those manuscripts that we've used and, and they're cited in the publications. But it's not in any Quran which shows you it's a lie because there's no transparency, there's no honesty there. Now maybe I'm wrong, maybe I've got this all wrong, maybe, maybe I've just got my information wrong, maybe I have. But I ask that question, what, is the, what are the manuscripts behind, or the manuscripts behind, the ancient manuscripts behind your Quran? And if you give me a satisfactory answer as a Muslim, I'll become a Muslim. But if you don't give me a satisfactory answer, then you need to confess your sin and you need to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'm not making this uh, video to um, offend Muslims. I really believe if you can't deal with this question, Islam is destroyed. The, fact, the intellectual foundation of Islam is totally, utterly destroyed. So with one question, Islam is utterly destroyed. You can talk about the Trinity and say, oh, the Trinity, uh, it's the contradictory. <coughs> uh, the fig tree, you love to use the fig tree as an argument. And, <coughs> and all these things, <coughs> Jesus didn't know anything at the fig tree, therefore he wasn't God. He used all these arguments. Uh, it's beside the point that you don't fully understand uh, <coughs> the incarnation and how Christians understand it, etc. But... That, that aside, it's not good saying the Bible's changed, not good attacking the Bible, saying the Bible teaches the flat earth when it doesn't teach us around earth, but never mind. All these arguments are pointless. If your own foundation is just a complete lie, it game over. <coughs> so I'm asking that you as Muslims, in the interest of honesty, in the interest of truth, show us the answer to this. I'll leave the comment section open. I'll let people debate and discuss. And if there's abuse, if the people are being abusive to each other, you'll just be blocked. So it's an opportunity for Muslims to give their scholarship and to present their arguments. And I would ask you to pass this video on to any uh, Muslim university, Muslim mosque, uh, any, any imam, any Muslim scholar, any Muslim apologist, and I invite them to bring comments and put comments underneath and their scholarship underneath and I invite them to a open debate under this video. 
So the opportunity is there. And if I'm wrong, I'll apologize and I'll repent and I'll become a Muslim. And I'll, and I'll say, I'll, re I'll recant, I'll, tur I'll turn away from Christianity and I'll become a Muslim. But if I'm right, Islam is totally, utterly destroyed, utterly finished. Islam has gone. It's, it's been cut at its very foundation, at its very root, it has been totally cut, annihilated, destroyed, because it cannot prove or give any basis or have any intellectual honesty or credibility if it cannot even begin to give us the manuscripts that are behind each of your personal Qurans. I'm going to read some verses. So, this is serious stuff. This is very, very serious. And I don't say it lightly. I don't say it lightly. It's very tough and strong question that I'm asking, but it's a very honest question. You can't attack the Bible. When the Bible, when we're honest about our text, and you haven't got the text, you can't name a text for your Quran. Now, I know I've gone on and on and I've laboured it and laboured it, but this is the single most devastating question that you can be asked as a Muslim. And it needs to be taken time for you to mull over the implications of that question. Okay? It's kind of like this. It sounds rude and brutal, but it's kind of like this. Imagine someone's got no intelligence. And somebody's got intelligence. Imagine somebody's not got a PhD. And somebody's got a PhD. Imagine somebody's blind. And somebody's not blind. Now this blind person with no PhD and who's not intelligent says to the person who's blind, uh, uh, the person who can see, the person with the PhD and with intelligence, says, you're blind, you ain't got a PhD, and you're not intelligent. So the person s proves that they can see, proves that they have got a PhD, and proves that they're intelligent. They prove it. But the person who is blind, the person who has no PhD, the person who is not intelligent, fails to provide any credible evidence that they can see, that they have a PhD, and that they can, um, that they're intelligent. When you as a Muslim say, the Bible's changed, we provide the evidence and the textual criticism, the science of textual criticism, we provide that evidence for the basis of our Bible translations. But you do not provide the evidence for the basis, the textual basis of the Quran. And for the Muslims who don't understand this, it's no good saying, oh, we can go right back to Uthman, or we can go, we, we have oral tradition. You've not understood the argument, you've not understood the profundity of the argument, the subtlety of the argument, and the absolute devastation of the argument. It goes right at the heart of Islam. Your Qurans are not based on any honest intellectual credibility. There are no ancient manuscripts that you have used your Qurans on, that you've based your Qurans. Now, the, we, don't get me wrong, we have ancient Qurans. We have many, many, many ancient Qurans. Don't get me wrong, don't misunderstand me. We have many ancient Qurans. We have one in Birmingham, we have one down in London, we have one over in Turkey, we have one in Yemen. We have many, many, many ancient uh, Qurans. The point is that there has never been a Quran produced taking into consideration all these ancient manuscripts and produced on that basis, using all that textual criticism. And then that Quran making clear reference and statement to the ancient manuscripts that they use, maybe in Yemen, maybe in London, maybe in Turkey. We have no Quran that has done that. We're trying to, but we, your Quran probably, I may be wrong, 
does not have any ancient text that it says that it's used to be published with it, the information with it. So, so I've laboured it, I know I've laboured that question, but let me hear what you have to say. It says in Galatians chapter 1, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father who raised him from the dead. And all the brethren which are with me unto the churches of Galatia. Grace be unto you and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world. According to the will of God and our Father. To whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. The gospel is that Christ died on a cross. He took the punishment for our sin. Any sin that you have, anything you've done wrong, don't lie, don't steal, don't commit adultery, God is going to bring wrath upon our sin. But Jesus Christ stepped in our place. He died on our behalf. It says in verse 4, who gave himself for our sins. And he died on your behalf. He took your punishment. And if you believe in Jesus Christ and confess your sin and turn away from sin and believe in him, you can be forgiven and, and, and know your sins are forgiven if you trust in him. And I would ask you, Muslim, um, dear Muslim, dear, dear Muslim, please think about your eternal destiny. Think about your eternal destiny. If Islam is the truth, I will abandon Christianity and I will come your way. But if Christianity is the truth, then you need to turn to the Lord and believe in him. And I'm challenging you as a Muslim and I'm challenging you in the most honest way, in the classical Islamic way. Where in the old classic Islam, the deep, deep scholars who studied deeply and profoundly would debate Christian scholars and they would debate it, it with high honour. I'm asking you on that classical level for you to give me the evidence for the Quran that it is the word of God, that it has been preserved. And to do that, you need to provide the evidence that the manuscripts that you used manuscripts to produce these Qurans. And if you cannot provide the manuscript evidence that was used for the Yusef Ali translation or the Pictel translation or whatever, if you cannot provide the evidence that scholars used certain manuscripts and, can, and, that, and that they put it in their publications and they show to have profound textual criticism where they have not only looked at one or two, but they tried to gather as much information as they can and do their textual criticism. If you cannot provide that evidence, then Muslims, you've been hoodwinked. Muslim apologists, you're pop propagating a lie. You're propagating something that is a lie. Muslim, uh, imams, you're propagating a lie. Muslims, you're believing a lie. But if I'm wrong, then have mercy upon me and show me that I'm wrong. Give me the evidence. So I leave it with you. I've studied it. I've looked into it. I have sources from uh, important, uh, important scholarly resources that I can quote you that stay, say categorically we have not got or there has not been a Quran that has been done based on textual criticism. And I will show you those resources if you bring something to the table. Your eternal destiny is at stake. This is not about scoring points. This is not about upsetting your faith. This is about the truth. If this is the truth, then I want to know if it's the truth. I don't think it's the truth. I really, really don't think it's the truth. I think you've been blinded. I think you've been brainwashed. I think that you've, you, you don't, you're not thinking critically. 
You're not thinking it through. I don't want to be offensive, but you're not thinking critically or intelligently about this, about this book. This book, by far, is greater. This book is the true word of God. This book is the magnificent word of God. And it shines forth in brilliance in all that it has to say. It says this, John says, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. It's all about Christ. It's all about the Lord Jesus. It's all about the Saviour. It's all about Him. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So I would ask you please, as Muslims, please think about this. Study it. Study it. Go to my website, jasonburnspreacher.com and you can download books, you can download information uh, about Christianity and, and what have you. Lots and lots of stuff that you can download and, and would be helpful for you. And uh, if you go to Answering Islam, uh, Muslim Journey to Hope, um, Give Me an Answer. These are websites that you can go to. Uh, Jeremiah Crime Ministries, Legionnaire Ministries, Desiring God Ministries, Grace to You, uh, Covenant Theological Seminary, Reformed Theological Seminary, Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, Master Seminary, um, Zachariah, Ravi Zachariah Ministries, um, Apologetic Press, uh, C.S. Lewis Institute, The Discovery Channel. Uh, these are just places where you can go and study Christianity uh, and, and find evidence for Christianity. But my website is jasonburnspreacher.com and you can download tons of information there. But get back to me and tell me what you think about that question. What are the manuscripts cited in your own personal Quran? Pass on this video and let me know what the Muslim community has to say. Thank you and God bless you.